name is John C. <laughs> Tanaka's lesson on related rates. Now the book gives the definition that in a related rates problem, the idea is to compute the rate of change of one quantity in terms of the rate of change of another quantity, which may or may easily be measured. The procedure is to find an equation that relates the two quantities and then use the chain rule to differentiate both sides with respect to time. The matter of the fact is, if several variables or quantities are related to each other and some of the variables are changing at a known rate, then we can use the derivative to determine how rapidly the other variable must be changing. There are many types of related rates problems that teachers use to make our lives torture. But by following some general steps, we can solve basically any related rates problem. So see, here with these eight steps, we can easily solve almost any single related rates problem. So for our first problem, Mr. Ferrari is climbing a ladder at Costco. The ladder he is climbing is 100 feet long. After 7 seconds of climbing, the ladder begins to fall and the bottom slides away from the wall at 5 feet per second. Find how fast the top of the ladder is falling down when the ladder is 60 feet off the ground. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, we're going to need to use our rules. And The first rule is that we should draw a picture to model the situation. So here we have a triangle resembling the ladder, the wall, and the ground and we've labeled sides x, y, and z. So now we can draw a more detailed picture to show the picture with all the rates that we know and all the lengths that we know. So here we have a picture of Mr. Farrar, and there he is right there. We also have the height that we're gonna to try to find, and we have a question mark because we don't, we're trying to find how fast the um, ladder is falling down the wall. We're also given how fast it's moving away from the wall, which is right here, and we're given the length of the ladder. So um, in order to fi figure out what we need to find, um, we can see what we know. So we'll start with the three basic things of what we know, which are x, y, and z. Um, so you may be wondering, um, how did we get x? Uh, well, we see that this is a triangle right here, and it's obviously a right triangle because the wall makes a right triangle with the ground. So using that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. So by using that, we can solve for x and we get x will be 80 feet. You can see that up here. We get x. And now, now that we know that it's going to be 80 feet long, we have our three knowns so far. These are just lengths. Now we can move on. We are also given that the value of dx dt or the change in x over the change in time. And that's given to us right here as 5 feet per second. So there we have dx dt, and we're trying to solve for dy dx, which in the picture is how fast the ladder is falling on the air. So our unknown is dy dt. Now we're also given inherently dz dt. And this is zero because, as you can see up here, z represents the length of the ladder. And that stays constant the whole time. So therefore, dz dt is zero. So um, we can set up the equation, and now we can follow the fifth step, which is writing down a mathematical model to solve the equation. And using that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem because that successfully relates all variables x, y, and z. Now, we can move on by differentiating it. And by differentiating the equation, we can find the point or the, the rate of change of one of these variables. As you can see, we're now finally given dy dt. Um, now, in order to get dx and dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt, we need to use the chain rule when we differentiate this initial Pythagorean theorem equation. So by doing that, we can easily get all of that. And so it's very important that you have to wait until the question has been differentiated to substitute information into the equations. So if you started substituting all these numbers, if you started substituting 80, 60, 100, that wouldn't actually solve the problem. So you need to wait 
and it can lead to an incorrect answer if you don't. So now we have these, now we can plug in all the values that we need. So here we have plugged in all the values that we need. We have 2 times 80 times 5 times 2 times 60 times R. Um, I replaced dy dt with r because r is, uh, I don't know, a smaller thing to write and it's easier so you don't get confused with all your calculations that you'll be doing. And then the right side is going to be zero because there's really no change in the length on that side. So now you can move on and we can continue to solve. So once we simplify it here, it looks like a relatively nice equation. So we can continue to solve as you can see. Now the rest is just algebra and arithmetic, but in the end, we get negative 20 over 3 feet per second, and so that is dy dt. So what we're showing here is the change of the y value, so the change that the ladder is undergoing when it falls in relation to time. And there we have it. So we can now make the conclusion that the ladder is falling at negative 20 over 3 feet per second when it is 60 feet off the ground. Okay, for our second problem, we'll be looking at a change in volume related rates problem. So here, a cone-shaped asteroid is falling towards Earth at 500 feet per second. The asteroid has a height of 12 miles and a diameter of 6 miles upon entering the atmosphere. The volume of the cone-shaped asteroid is decreasing by 4 meters cubed per second. Find the rate at which the asteroid's height is changing when the height is 6 miles long. So here, we're going to be using a cone. And so this is our cone, a more simplified version, rather than our other image, where it includes the Earth. Um, but here we're going to just go based off what we know. So first, after drawing the image, we can list out what we know. So we know that the diameter is 6 miles long. And since we're going to be dealing with volume, um, it's more ideal to try to find the radius at the time. So we can easily find that, and our radius would be 3 miles. We're also given that the height is 12 miles initially, and that at the end, it's going to be 6 miles long. So we need to find out um, the change in height when the height is 6 miles long. Um, and then we also have the volume, the change in the volume. So the change in the volume is 4 miles cubed per second. And that is what we're given. So um, we can set up a related rates triangle first. And this is going to help us relate the, um, the height and the change in radius to each other. And I'll show you later, but that's how um, we're going to need to do this right now. So we can easily relate the two um, using similar triangles. Uh, we're given initially that this is the height and the radius of the cone. And then this is what it's going to be um, at the end. So we can easily create a relationship between the two variables, between r and h. And that is that r is equal to h over 4. Um, you could solve for h and solve for h in terms of r. But in this case, as I'll explain later, it's going to be easier to solve for r in terms of h. So now um, we're going to have to find a way to relate all of the data that we're given. So um, Given that we're given the change in volume and we're given height and diameter in a cone, we can see that we should use the volume of a cone equation. So this is the volume of a cone equation right here. And now what we're going to want to do is differentiate it right here. So in most terms, in most cases, and in regular problems, you would differentiate this. And this is what you would get. However, there is one problem that we have with this equation, is that here, we need to know what dr dt is. And that is the change in the radius over the change in time. And the problem with this is that we're not given that. So we cannot use this equation because there's no possible way in which we can find dr dt given the information that we have. So rather than crying about this or getting mad at yourself or Mr. Farrar, you can just not use this method. So in this case, this would not work. So disregard this. Instead, using what we know up top in this relationship between r and h. Before we differentiate, we can plug in r for h. This is because we're trying to find dh dt. And we're trying to solve everything in terms of the height. 
So therefore, since we have a relationship between the height and the radius, which is r is equal to h over 4, we can easily plug that in here. So it becomes v is equal to 1 thirds pi um, h over 4 squared times h. And we can simplify that to make our lives easier. And that'll become 1 thirds pi h cubed over 14. Now, um, moving on, we can take the derivative, which is what we need to do to find the correct relationship between the numbers. And so we get dv over dt is equal to 3 over 3 pi h squared over 16 times dh dt. Now we have the whole thing in terms of one variable and one equation. So here we're solving just for dh dt. We don't, need, we don't actually need the radius. All we need the radius for is to find the relationship between the radius and height, and then we can substitute everything in. So um, we can differentiate, we can simplify. So it's always good to simplify before you plug in. So that way you have the most simplest form and there's less a chance that you can make an error in your um, algebra. So now we can plug everything in once it's in the simplest form. So we have four is equal to pi um, 36 over 16 dh dt, or here I have six squared over 16. Um, and then we can solve and in the end, we would get dh over dt is equal to this long decimal miles per second, or in simpler terms, 16 over 9 pi meters per second. So we can make the conclusion that the height of the cone of the asteroid is shrinking at 16 over 9 pi miles per second. So here I've written down the key lesson for this video, and it's basically stating that we are trying to find the rate of change of one quantity and comparing that and relating that to the change of another quantity. Like we saw in the last problem, the rate of change of the radius and the rate of change of the height, or the rate of change in the volume, or the rate of change of height. So we're just relating two variables to each other and using that to successfully solve and find the rates of other variables. Um, so key notes for this lesson in this video. Um, I would say the first one is to follow the key eight steps. So like I mentioned earlier, our key eight steps are very important. But of those, of all of those eight, I would say two of them are the most important, and that's to draw a picture. So by drawing a picture, we can easily visualize what is going to happen, what what is going to happen, and how we should relate each variable to each other. Um, personally, that's for me. I like to draw pictures because I guess I like to see things better. Um, but our second step, and the second most important thing, is to find a model of the equation to relate the variables. And this can be easily found in drawing a picture. So by drawing a picture, we can find the relationship between the model. We can even see that the image is going to be a cone. And that way, we can successfully find the equation and know what we're trying to solve for and what we already have. So by doing that, we can easily solve this problem. So the second most important thing is to, di is to differentiate with respect to time. So you always want to have, like in our other problems, something that relates to time. So whenever you have an equation, so say it's x squared even, you're always going to want to, when you differentiate, 2x. That's how you would normally differentiate it, right? But here, in related rates, we're trying to find the rate and change of x per se. That means we always need to include the dx over dt, or dy over dt, or dz over dt. So it's always important that we have this part right here. This is our most important part, because that shows the rate of change. Without this, it's just a regular problem, and we're just going to find the change at the point but we're not really going to solve for what we want. And what we want is this change, so it's very important to find this. Now our third thing that we're going to have to find is substitute for variables. So like I showed you last time, it's very important that you actually don't want to substitute the variables too soon or too late. So um, like in our first example, um, we wanted to not plug in the variables at the beginning of the equation. You want to wait to differentiate them, and then you plug them in down here. And same goes for our other problem. Um, our other problem uh, is right here. And in our other problem, we do not need this. We do not want to do this. We want to find the relationship between the radius and the height, and then plug that in, like we did down here, to make our lives easier. Um, Cal teachers have these problems to torture us, and we want to outsmart them and show that we're smarter than them and that we can solve these problems easily and successfully. And so by doing that, we can easily solve the problem with relationships. 
So now, overall, we're basically finding the rate at which some quantity is changing by relating the quantity to other quantities whose rates of change are known. So we're taking what we know and applying it to what we don't know. And this is what we're doing with not only in these problems, but with derivatives and what we should be doing in life. And that's it. Oh! oh my god! <laughs>